Okay, let's talk about this 2018 proposal yep. to DARPA. So I guess who's drafted the proposal? Is it uh, EcoHealth? Eco EcoHealth, but the proposal is to do, re so EcoHealth is technically uh, a US funded organization. Primarily. And then the idea was to do work at Wuhan Institute of Virology. With, yeah, so it was, the, with EcoHealth. Yes. Yeah, so EcoHealth, basically that um, the Wuhan Institute of Virology was going to go and they were going to collect these viruses and store them at, at Wuhan Institute of Virology. But they're also going to do the actual test. So according, it's a really important point. According to their proposal, the actual work was going to be done at the lab of Ralph Barrick at the University of North Carolina, who's probably the world's leading expert on uh, corona uh, coronaviruses. And so we know that DARPA didn't fund that work. Um, we know, I think, quite well that Ralph Barrick's lab, in part uh, because it was not uh, funded by, uh, by DARPA, they didn't do that specific work. What we don't know is, well, what work was done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology because WIV was part of this proposal. They had access to all of the plans they had done, they had their own capacity and they had already done a lot of work in genetically genetically altering this exact category of viruses. They had created um, a chimeric mixed uh, viruses. They had done, they had mastered pretty much all of the steps in order to achieve this thing that they applied for funding with uh, EcoHealth to do. And so the question is, did the Wuhan Institute of Virology go through with that research anyway. And in my mind, there's, that's a very, very real possibility. It would certainly explain why they're giving no information. And um, as you know, I've been a member of the World Health Organization Expert Advisory Committee on Human Genome Editing, mm -hmm. uh, which Dr. Tedros created in the aftermath of the announcement of the world's first CRISPR babies. And it was just basically the exact same story. So Ho Zhang Kui, a Chinese scientist, it was not a first tier scientist, but a perfectly adequate second tier scientist, came to the United States, learned all of these capacities, went back to China and said, well, there's a much more permissive environment. I'm going to you know, be a, a world leader. I'm going to establish both myself and China. So in every scientific field, we're seeing this, this same thing where you kind of learn a model and then you do it in China. So is it possible uh, that the Wuhan Institute of Virology with this exact game plan um, was doing it anyway? Do we, possible? We have no clue um, what work was being done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It seems extremely likely um, that at the Wuhan Institute of, of Virology, and this is certainly the US government position, there was the work that was being done in Dr. Shu's lab but that wasn't the whole WIV. We know, or at least according to the United States government, that there was the Chinese military, the PLA, was doing work there. Were they doing this kind of work, not to create a bioweapon, um, but in order to understand these viruses, maybe to develop vaccines and treatments? It, it seems like a very, very logical possibility. Uh, and then, so we know that the, the Wuhan Institute of Virology had all of the skills. We know that they were part of this proposal. And then you have Peter Dayzak, who knows all of this, that at that time in February of 2020, we didn't know. But then he comes swinging out of the gate saying anybody who's raising this possibility um, of, a, of a lab incident origin is a conspiracy theorist. I mean, it really makes him look, in my mind, very, very bad. And yeah, not to at least be somewhat open-minded on this because he knows all the details. He knows that it's not 0%. I mean, there's no yeah. way in his mind could you even argue that. So it's, it's potential because of the bias, because of your focus. I mean, it could be the Anthony Fauci masks thing, where he knows there's some significant probability that this is happening, but in order to, uh, uh, preserve good relations with our Chinese colleagues. We want to make sure we tell a certain kind of narrative. So it's not really lying. It's doing the best possible action at this time to help the world. Not that this already happened. Yeah. But that's how like... Yeah, I'm, I, I think it's quite likely that that was the story that he was telling himself. But it's that, that lack of transparency, yeah. in my mind, is 
fraudulent, um, that the that we were struggling to understand something that we didn't understand, and that I just think that it, people who possess that kind of information, especially when um, the existence, like his, the entire career of Peter Daszak is based on U.S. taxpayers. There's a debt that comes with that, and that debt is honesty and transparency. And for all of us, and our, you talked about your girlfriend checking your phone. For all of us, being honest and, and transparent in the most difficult times is really difficult. If it were easy, everybody would do it. And and that's, you know, I just feel that that uh, Peter was the opposite of transparent and then went on the offensive and then um, uh, had the gall of joining, I know we can talk about this, this um, highly compromised um, joint study um, process with the the, the um, international experts and their Chinese government counterparts, and used that as a way of furthering this, um, in my mind, fraudulent narrative um, that it almost certainly came from uh, natural origins and um, and a lab origin was extremely unlikely. Just to stick briefly on the proposal to wrap that up, because I do think. In a in a kind of John Stewart way, if, if you heard that uh, yeah, a, a bit, he, yeah, yeah, sort of kind of like common sense way, the 2018 proposal to DARPA from EcoHealth Alliance and Wuhan Institute of Virology just seems like a bit of a smoking gun to me, like that. Um, so the, there's this excellent book that people should read uh, called Viral, The Search for the Origin of COVID-19. Uh, Matt Ridley and uh, Alina Chan, I think Alina is in uh, MIT. She's probably She's at the Broad, yeah. At Broad Institute, yeah, yeah. So she, uh, I heard her in an interview give this analogy of, a, <laughs> of unicorns. Yeah. And uh, where basically somebody writes a proposal to add horns to horses the proposal was rejected. And then uh, a couple of years later, or a year later, a unicorn shows up. <laughs> In the place where they're proposing to do it. I mean, that's so I had- And then everyone was like, yeah. I, it's natural origin. Yeah. It's like, it's possible it's natural yeah. origin. Like we haven't detected a unicorn yet, and this is the first time we've detected a unicorn. Or it could be this massive organization that was planning, is fully equipped, has- like a, a history of being able to do this stuff, has the world experts to do it, has the funding, has the motivation to add horns to horses. And now a unicorn shows up and they're saying, nope, yeah. def def <laughs> def could, definitely that, natural. Well, th that connects to the to what you, your first question of how do I get to my 85%? And here's here's a summary of that, uh, of that answer. And so it's what I said in my 60 Minutes uh, interview a long time ago, of all the gin joints and all the towns and all the yeah. world, the quote from, uh, from Casablanca. Mm -hmm. And so of all the places in the world where we have an outbreak of a SARS-like bat coronavirus, it's not in the area of the natural habitat of the horseshoe bats. It's the one city in China um, with the first and largest um, level four virology lab, which actually wasn't even using it. They were doing level three and, and level two for this work, where they had the world's largest collection of bat coronaviruses, um, where they were doing aggressive experiments designed to make these scary viruses scarier, where they had been part of an application to insert a furin cleavage site able to infect human cells, um, and where the, when the outbreak happened, we had a virus that was ready, ready for action to infect humans and to this day better able to infect humans than any other species, including, uh, including bats. And then from day one, there's this massive cover-up. And then on top of that, in spite of lots of efforts by lots of people, there's basically no evidence for the natural origin hypothesis. Everything that I've described just now is circumstantial, but there's a certain point of where you add up the circumstances and you see, well, this seems pretty, pretty likely. I mean, if we're getting to 100%, we are not at 100% by any means. There still is a possibility of a natural origin. And if we find that, great. But from everything that I know, that's how I get to my 85